In the United States, buildings consume 40% of total primary energy usage. This can be reduced, but how? It will need to be net zero, which means it has to produce as much energy as it uses annually. It kind of comes with the territory that you have to have some production to actually get to zero. You have to produce some amount of energy. So what you're trying to do is make the building consume as absolutely as little as possible so that you have the capability of producing as much as it needs. Traditionally built houses get their energy from sources that produce large amounts of carbon emissions, such as this coal plant. To begin reducing a building's carbon footprint, the energy a building draws from these traditional carbon emitting sources needs to be reduced to the smallest amount feasible. Once this demand is reduced as low as possible, the remaining energy is supplemented by renewable energy sources like wind and solar power. In this way, the energy drawn from emission-producing sources is matched by the energy produced by renewable sources. This makes a building net zero. You spend less money, um, though again, it will take centuries to make that money back. Um, and uh, the house is more comfortable. And then there's the more uh, intangibles. There's the fact that You've built a house that will probably last at least a century without modification. Um, most of the materials used in the house um, are double, triple, even quadruple layers of defense against the elements, which means that the house is much better prepared to deal with all sorts of different kinds of weather and climatic conditions. The wall thickness is not arbitrary. The walls are as thick as they need to be to hit the certification level. And so you might end up spending more money. We probably ended up spending more money on making our walls thicker than we would have if we had just wanted more insulation versus exactly this much. Um, the air exchanger is um, a Passive House certified air exchanger, which is more expensive than if you just wanted a, a decent one, you know, a decent American model versus like the highest end Swiss one, very different in terms of cost. And then if you look at the windows, the windows are triple pane windows from, from Germany. Um, so you're not just paying for nice windows, but you're also paying to have them shipped from you know, a place in Germany to the, the front of your house, basically. We're finding that reducing uh, carbon uh, fossil fuels 50 to 60% in a building uh, on average from 2003 it's not costing anything. You know, it's just the way you design the building today. In Minnesota, we have Sustainable Building 2030, which is a program to look at creating buildings that have lower and lower fossil fuel usage until 2030, where there'll be zero, there'll be net carbon to the building. The program started in 2010 with a requirement to be 50% more efficient than the average building. Today it's 60%, and in 2015 it'll be 70%, and so on. In Minnesota, when a client gets bond proceeds in the year 2030 to design a building like at the University of Minnesota, it will need to be net zero. North St. Paul has already established itself as a green city, committed to reducing its carbon footprint. To build on this reputation, the city can start by incorporating the Sustainable Buildings 2030 initiative into future city planning. The city's current redevelopment plan has identified a 416,000 square foot area along 7th Street as a potential area for redevelopment. The plan calls for redevelopment of 82,000 square feet of commercial space and 334,000 square feet of office and light industrial space, as well as 768 residential units. By incorporating net zero carbon building designs into these future redevelopment objectives, North St. Paul has the potential to become a leader in the area of reduced carbon emissions. 
further demonstrating their commitment to a sustainable future for all. If you believe that you have a role in this climate change, then maybe making it uh, uh, 